Hello, this is Far Charybdis. We're casting from our new sound <laughs> studio, which is uh, located in a truck driving down the highway. <laughs> 3K4 before Honeycomb, Polymorph Snorri, 3 Gats, Trench Coat, Quino Bean, and Quiz Quiz on ANS, Pro Dramas, Subtle Huber, San Internet Explorer on OSP. Good map. Hopefully we see more rail gaming and hopefully it is pretty dynamic. Honeycomb is one of those interesting maps. It's... You can kind of do anything here. With how the cover is, it's like a slightly more open tumbleweed. Because with the way the cover is, you can do close range games, but there's also enough open sight lines that you can do long range gaming as well. And you can dodge around too through the cover. It's, uh, it's quite a good map. It's a really good map. We're dropping down here. With the OSP, I believe that's an Acela. Yeah, it's Crow again. Rail Gaming. As expected, as predicted, as assumed. Is it double rails though? Nope, 450 rails. Alright, good. Quinto has the ANS counterpart of 450 rails, actually. That's pretty funny. And an explorer. Is this a roller bunker? Uh, it doesn't really do that anymore. It's very sad because it was pretty cool. 450 broadside, supported by a little tug swarm. Is that all that's in here? Just the torp tugs? Oh yeah. Torp and damning, jamming tugs. Very nice. That's a murder ball right there. Don't see torp tug swarms much very often. Or much more. I should say much and very often are the same thing. Much anymore. Oh man, it is getting late. It's already 9.30 in the evening. It's well past the time I turn into a pumpkin. Dramus has four monitors supported by an EWR and an LRT tugs. So the Hubris has cat fleet with a handful of MT spread all over the map. Oh my goodness. Is that six? Yeah, it's six multi-mission tugs. And four gun shuttles. Now that is a build and a half. Three cats. Where's the money on these? Two voxels and one sprinter? Ah, 12 damage control teams. What the fuck? Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, that's kind of the old voxel design. The enemy is securing zone atlas. 12 damage control teams on each voxel. <laughs> With the large reinforced lockers there. Oh my goodness. Neuride, rocking the king again. 450s on top and bottom and rear, 120s on the nipples, and some some hard kill on the sides. I don't think there's a single box of soft kill on this thing. No, all the soft kills offset in the Lucille. Two blankets and interrupt and a chaff box. But I mean, as previously discussed, has the 450 rail counterpart one standard 450 Axford. The enemy secured zone. Boxer. Ammo elevators and a parallax. No track correlators. Spyglass. Which is unfortunate because that would support the rails really well, I would think. I don't know. Red guns. Seems like a normal rail build. Oh, the intel center the seems like a colossal waste of points. I don't know about that one, Drew. Experts are already way too tight for you to really afford intel attack. centers. Quiz goes for the delta point, loses a shuttle. I think he's lost a sprinter somewhere else, too. He's got one beam guard in the alpha point. Oh, he's doing the S2 thing. Nice, nice. He's got a pair of S2H ships, a pair of bombers hanging out. Nice. Echo mid part of the map. And then a pair of additional torpedo capping vets. 
Running around and a pair of Nike boys. Need both the Nike boys down. One going to Charlie, one going to Delta. The enemy secured zone comet. She really got to grab one of those. OSP does manage to get the Charlie and gets it basically for free, losing uh, just one the gun shuttle here. Her thugs are hanging out, ready to bomb something. Ooh, they've showed their hand a little bit, I think, though. is gonna know what that is. Echo Vessel dead. I think OBS might have a slight memory leak, because my game has been running steadily worse. I've never just let it run for a really long time, so I'm actually going to... Well, I can't restart it, because we're in the middle of the match. I've done that in the lobby. Oh well. Grimace's monitor blob eating some 450s and some rail guns. Not in a bad shape yet, and they are able to get into that spot on the opposite side of the rock of the bombers, actually. That's kind of funny. It's a really powerful position for them to be in because they can jump onto any part of the map. So this, this, this is what I'm talking about. You could set something at the back, like Crow has done with their 450 and railguns and see most of the map and most of the approach points or you can push forward park behind a rock and be able to attack most of the points and defend most of the points like it's it's got it's good for range and for long range and for short range and that's that's really cool it's really good map design and a line ship decoy is currently getting railed nice Oh, one even lands on the decoy. Several lands on the decoy, maybe? Oh, no. I don't. see at least three heads. You just saw one. Alright, uh, minus one on the Steam review. <laughs> Liner decoys do not get blast holes in them. Unbelievable. You know, there it goes. Very silly. I'm glad the immersion posts don't really happen in video games that much anymore. It was All like a those big people thing got like hyper concentrated into Star Citizen for Space oh, Game. Oh, okay. That explains Which it. Which helped a lot. Yeah, that'll solve that problem. See you later, Qua. 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 I have no idea how to pronounce that. What? I think it was closest. Also, um, Chile got hit. Those people got concentrated in the stars of the sun. Is... You know, thinking about it, and thinking about the guys that I know that are into Star Citizen, uh, I, I, I think that's true. Actually, I would one hundred percent believe that. <laughs> they promised the moon to the my realism crowd, and that's why it's so doomed. Yeah. I blame. Uh, maybe I'm a Star Citizen apologist, but I blame Crytek for selling them a crap game engine. I blame over ambition mostly. I remember that didn't help. A guy if it was made on, in Unreal, it could be done by now. Trying to sell me on that concept in like 2011 or 2012. I backed it back when it first launched under Squadron 42 because I love me a World War II in space dogfighter. I'm a sucker for that, but then the project immediately jumped the shark. 42 might ship soon, trademark. I lost most interest in it when I heard how much movie cast they are putting into it. I really liked Free Space 2. Alright, looks like the ANS Death Blob is moving above Delta, making the kind of the classic mistake of moving an army into a point that they don't actually control, and I don't think they can cap. So I think if the sprinter comes over here and tries to get this point, it's just going to get railed and 450'd, and 
multi missions out. Because uh, you, you actually do need it. to have gap control before moving in. Oh, okay, the voxels are covering it. The voxels are covering it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they can take the point. The enemy is securing zone dagger. Torpedo tug still on the prowl, still undetected. I'm not 100% sure if ANS is aware of them. They definitely could have seen them. Uh, with one of the missile strikes, and also when you just see that much 100 mil coming from a rectangle-like or a star-like shape, you know it's got to be tugs. But people haven't been bringing them enough, so people, folks might not be ready to make that assumption of, oh yeah, that's a torp tug swarm, even though it's, like, that is the telltale sign of the torp tug swarm. US 2 heading into the delta point there. Voxel's not taking too much damage. And the DC team's gonna be able to handle the rail attacks, actually, since it's just one railgun and it's got an axe for its worth of damage control. <laughs> the Voxel's like, gonna be pretty hey, fine. Up axe for its yeah. worth of damage control. Yeah, th this is the dragon build, is what this is. And that is just so much damage control. It's more than you're ever going to use. But it's actually going to be pretty good against the rails. Because normally rails will ruin voxels oh, with low damage. Because they have they have low damage control, like six teams at most. Constantly RPFing NSLO is not the winning oh, move. Oh, yeah, that's kind of a problem. Oh, as soon as I said it, they switched over. Good. EP uh, going to the broadside of a locked voxel, that's pretty brutal. Bye bye, Orson. So I think that's what I heard. I think I heard I'll catch you later. No, I asked if I could get a stream up, I just didn't want oh, to interrupt. No. It's uh it's uh it's on the Twitch stream. Oh right, you're still on Twitch, my apologies. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, decoy container eating several command HOJ hybrids, S2s. Oh, it's I just honestly don't think OSP can afford to concentrate DC teams because they're uh, kind of intentionally designed around light damage control and high ship hull count. That's yet another, like, OSP is suffering the rails problem. But the rails do nothing to OSP. They just phase straight through. Yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Fucking aids. Big MMT strike out on this defending destroyer, but it's going to be an AD. Destroyer gonna drop rather than engaging them directly. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like I remember uh Pyro's old quad destroyer build with railguns and two fifties. The railguns would just mulch pull critters with standard DC compliments. There's there's done. Takes a little bit. And you gotta clean up with the 250s. But it's quite good. In the correct circumstance. I think most of the people who are like, ah, rails are bad versus OSP are folks who are trying to use, like, two rail guns on their battleship or one rail axford uh on live and the traverse just literally can't keep up with the movement of the bulk freighter and so they're damaged. Also they don't get big damage bad. numbers at the end of the game screen and people put so much stock in that. Honestly I think that's the real problem. Cause I have seen like like we were talking about earlier is Crow in double rail 
And even in single roll Ocello and 450 Ocello, like they're flying now, has done some crazy work in matches, but the damage numbers are always kind of low. People are like, ah, you're not doing anything. No, I remember when uh, one of the patches that Plasma was bugged, I was bringing triple Plasma bulkers, like pure broadside Plasma and no other offensive weapons, and just deleting ships left and right with them but the damage number screen would always be really 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 low and folks would be like yeah this, this isn't doing anything you're not doing any damage well I, I killed i killed like four vessels four capital ships on my own i'm pretty sure these are doing damage dude you can't you can't be obsessed with the numbers because what matters is your actual effect on the game not the metrics wait you mean when the metric becomes a target Textualization is key. What a concept. King now getting plasma in its port side. And that's, I think, probably the biggest issue with the rail discourse. Is people are like, well, these are just objectively awful and they need buff, 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 buff. When they're actually pretty good, they just need some quality of life improvements. Like the Traverse update. The Traverse, yeah. Of course, that's not enough. People would complain if it was just reverse, so we made them burst, and that's also not enough. People are going to complain until they're the only gun that matters. So I've, I've at this point lost like all respect for the Balkanites. You had respect for the Balkanites? Yes. All right. I admire your conviction. Thank you, dear. Battleship, man, this battleship only has two more damage control teams than each of one of the voxels. <laughs> and but, only one more to restore, so it's just this extra reinforced locker. Yeah. Well, that's uh, wild to think about, actually. And these damage control teams are very easily going to be able to handle the uh, one rail solo burst of rail into the flank of the BV. These, oh, the Torp Tugs. The Torp Tugs are here. They are on top of the king. The king has no soft kill except in the Lucille, and the Torp Tugs are executing the Lucille with their 100 millimeters. This is the big risk of escorts, and this is why people have been putting all their soft kill onto their battleship, because there's kind of nothing the Torp Tugs can do if it's on the battleship, although this interrupt is still active. So these might just miss. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. Directly into that ship. And that is... Effectively dead. Yeah, that's another problem. Oh, is it really too far away? Oh Reactor my god. Reactor overload. Um, magazine cook-off. Do we have fuel line fire? I don't see one. Yeah, it's... Uh... That's, uh... Now that little bit of rail fire may actually help. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do have to be, like, closer to the missiles than your ship is to the missiles. I think the map's a little different with CR-10s, but I know it's CR-75s. That's how it works out. Does the interrupt test be closer than the, than the radar? Or than the antenna? Presumably with the CR-10s, it's a little more in the interrupts favor but you can't be super offset with it womp womp man look at that beautiful now and things out of the fight and probably basically out of the game it's not gonna go nuclear but you, you just can't stand up after that a, kind of a strike. Now with only two restores in your pocket, he's going to have to paint your store, and he's only going to wind up with a couple left at the end of it. Especially if the rails or the C90 kills it, but it looks like the C90 is looking to engage. Quino Beans, Railford. Getting into the sick jams part of the night. Where the AI War OST really goes off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! Over to 
plasma, adding <laughs> battleship, but I mean at this point that's just insult to injury. Oh man, some 450 out of the Doom too! 450 AP directly into the drive block. A few deflections though, quite a few deflections actually. Reactor of the whip gets downed. Battleship does a pit maneuver on the rock here. But an external braking. Alright, ANS has lost map control entirely. They're now bottled up into the Alpha and the Delta point. They've lost control. They've lost pressure on Charlie. They're putting pressure on Bravo. But I don't know how well that's going to work out with the cells and reserve. Actually, it's working out pretty well. What happened to you? Oh, that's missiles. Or plasma? That looks kind of like plasma, honestly. <laughs> it's got to be missiles, though. Epoxic girls. I'm pretty good at health, though. I was eating a little bit of 250 there. A little bit back here. Torque Tug is about to uh, pull another one, actually. I think if these had. Oh, I can't see missile compliments from the mouse over. There we go. The no, they are out of pylons. That's a good trade, though. That's a real good trade. Yeah, Torque Tug is damn good. You just need teamwork. They will. They will kill a fish. I think that might be one of the reasons that. Rocket shuttles have been kind of in vogue over the torp tugs for killing uh, battleships. So you can just run on them. Also, the interrupt can't stop you. Because, like, if that battleship had an interrupt on it, then the torp tugs would have just been fucked. That's the game. Yeah, OSP takes it. It's true. SH is generally the go to. Good damn out of the voxels. Battleship got wrecked. Man, is it 7k out of the railship? Alright, right, right, right. Nice early uh, denial of our caps, though. That was solid. I got some beautiful HEKPs on the SLO, and then it ran away. Dude. No, those are some pretty good heads. HEKPs just not enough. It does so much better if you have some HEI to soften it up first. It does have HEI mm -hmm. to soften it up. It just doesn't do enough. Uh, those ones also didn't land for the most part from what I saw. The first few missiles that Salvo went into Narnia. I can check. I got one hit. Oh yeah, none of my other missiles hit. Only the HEI KP is hit. Yep. He's, uh... Sorry, you there? Yeah. What's up? Can I ask you something? Sure. What's the performance on rails this testing night? Well, how did they do? How did you see them do? What That's kind of form did they take? Kind of complicated. I think. It always is with rail guns. I think balance wise, they're fine, but I think. Be okay, because they put a decent amount of fire down the field, but they come with the risk of, well, the same risk that every off-map resource comes with, uh, and that's the okay, fact that you just don't have it on the field. But, I really don't like the gameplay they're creating. Hmm. Well, that's just the same as before, though, isn't it? 
Sort of. Because it's just us. Uh, six DDs. <laughs> but people don't really bring those, is the difference. And I think that the, like, mythical... The myth, the mythos of the artillery railgun big ship oh, is just going to be absolutely hell on the player base because people are going to be... Well, there's going to be less fine. interest in OSP. One... Um, and there's just going to be constant, constant real spam everywhere, and it's going to make the game really, really, really bogged down. But the real so oh. is better, for example. I, I, it I've should be better than the real CH, in 4v4 at least. Isn't I've been it? using this pair in skirmishing in how many matches now, and it's been going pretty well every game I've run it. You screwed me over in the most roundabout way possible using the rails where I wanted to use less DC teams, so I switched my fox halls off flank. Then it was too slow to catch up and got caught out. At one point, I was locked and taking a bunch of fire. I just turned my radars off and just, nope. Couldn't see me anymore. Bye. But does the real CC feel more useful in 4v4 than a real CH, for example? Um, That's what I'm... I... It's, I've been feeling useful, like more useful than I am when I normally run this. Uh, like this last game, I think is a good example where like me poking at D and then retreating, like hold enough to have to deal with me. And then I could just skirmish and back up and make sure anybody who tried to chase me was lit on fire. Okay, because I've been reading in the pit that the real triple real CH has been doing really well and all this stuff, but I, there's been no like having tested this it. before, like I, I can feel that the viability of this is similar to the one of this six real DD one in terms of four v four. So it's just not that great, at least from what I've seen. Uh, as have these games like shown something different? Like I don't understand how the triple royal CH has been doing really well. So I think uh, it's because of the current situation with capitals being really distorting how games play out. Because it's like you have to have the you have you have two opposite weapons that deal with the backline rails in the frontline capitals, but because of how strong, especially something like a mean battleship, is you have to really, really heavily invest in those frontline assets to challenge high levels of capitals, and so you just don't have the tools to deal with the backline rails. So you just kind of have to deal with them. I see that because about... it's not like because the way ostensibly the way you deal with backline rails, you you have three choices. You flank with high-speed bulk freighters and luck into getting under someone's radar and you just get back there and you kill them. Uh, this is really rare and not reliable. You get back there with multi-mission tugs or arsenal tugs and kill them, which is practical with destroyers. Uh, but you can't really do that with experts because they're survivability. Or you just ignore them and fight and try to win the, the frontline match and that's mostly been what people have been forced to do so that, that's why i'm saying like okay. they are i think they're balanced i just think they make for a very unfun game experience because you're just constantly getting railed all the time okay i i can see about the third point okay but first but i think kind of mt can take down a triple relaxer fleet like actually <laughs> uh, it can actually kill it if not like disable it for the whole game um i i can't, just can't see them bringing any reliable pd for that for mmts or so, anything like that if they are bringing a decent rpm uh and about the third point yeah but like what's different in this from um six rail dd kind of thing like you're still taking off 3k of combat lead off the map so like that's a way easier fight to win uh, if you actually bring the investment in like monitors and stuff for OSP. So I, I just can't see it being viable in any way. Like I get it's annoying, but I, I don't see it being burst, good. Specifically, it's the burst. It's the fact that you can get uh, 
and just an absolute buckload of rails dumped into something immediately. And it sets a lot of fires, and it, it instantly forces whatever target is getting railed behind cover, because if that gets followed up, they're pretty much screwed. Uh, whereas with the six rail DDs, even though you do have a really high RPM, uh, you just don't have the same burst, and it has, it does, it winds up doing less damage. Because depending on how these rail CHs are built, like your burst potential out of a six rail DDRA is actually comes to be similar. So uh, compared to like a four DD. Uh, to a double CH kind of deal. Uh, it's not... Like, I uh, I can't really see it being like a viable strat against a competent we, team. Triple we CH. Have, uh, what? Oh my god. We haven't seen double rail CH yet, so I have no idea how that's gonna go, but when I was playing the triple rail CHs, it didn't really matter even if they did damage you, because you just rail dumped someone so hard that it just like made them not able to play the game for 30 seconds yeah but you're still getting like super carried by your like so, this is all dependent on your front line doing really really well so the... like you're dependent on your team for that. Like, voice chat op voice chat op so part of the problem it, it, with it, the NMT like solution that. is that uh the triple axe build just kills NMTs. Like it, it just does. If they get detected and they get a halfway decent track on them, they just die immediately to the rail. Yeah, but, and yeah. again, that's a big if because you're already taking 3k off the front line, and then if any scout asset is get, taking more points off that front line, which the OSP can get an advantage of, especially because they can get more scouts uh, than and the ENS can. Like, that's a, an advantage to leverage, and I don't think the ENS can actually afford in 4v4 to take off 3k to spend in rails. So Herman, I feel the need to clarify one additional point, which is the first two games played tonight with the Triple Rail Axford were played on Aorta and Rallas. Oh, okay, well, never mind. I actually don't have anything to comment on this. On, yeah, in the Rallas game, like, I, my intention- <laughs> Play some games on pillars, you cringers. <laughs> my intention was to sneak my MMTs around to try to deal with whatever rail assets they had, but they, I, as I, soon as they were spotted, they got locked and died if they were out in the open. The thing is, like in a 5v5 environment, I can see the, re the triple rail CH being like worse than something that brings his own scouts. Because you're gonna have to dedicate more and more points on. Uh, like actually targeting that burst. So you're gonna shoot less bullets at the end of the day, at worse targets, if you, uh, than if you actually got scouts. Which is true for railguns today, like in the current patch. And I don't think we're gonna see any different uh, results that we actually saw uh, during the last iteration of testing these railguns. Which is actually, they, they still only work in 5v5, yeah. except the North Hello. I'm starting to get so sick. I'm getting so sick of people, people in the pit or joining this chat like, um, rails aren't actually going to be meta, they're going to be really bad, like they still are, like without even using the rail. Well, I tested them last week, so, like, so? I, I've so. Oh. it's the same, and I tested them the last time that they, they got changed to what they are right now, and the environment was exactly the same. So, like, I, I'm not seeing any differences in how it was back then and how it is now. Actually, they're weaker now because rails can just kill rail turrets easily. Almost in the Yeah, that, 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 that is true. Use. Also, the new fire suppression module does have a relevance uh, in this conversation because the battleship is less vulnerable to rails than it was um, in the last balance patch. <laughs> Doesn't stop the rails from destroying thrusters or starting main bus shorts. It is still very annoying, but it is less annoying to a battleship that is fully teamed. Especially now that we, with the berthing change, uh, you can fully team a battleship really easy, uh, saturated with teams. And Again, the argument is not that it's busted. The argument, nobody's well, made an argument that it's busted as far as I know. It's just obnoxious. Yeah, it's really, it's really not fun. It slows the game down a lot. 
And oh, uh, yeah. I also think I it's going to be just bad for the public experience because as we've seen, people are obsessed with rail capitals to an almost absurd degree. And that's going to pull fewer people. There's going to pull more people off of OSP, even though, yeah, the rail SLO is probably better point for point than the rail Axford. But the people want to like awesome. military ship with rails on the good guy team. Um, but it was solo is on the good guy. We've also got the problem. Yeah, try telling that to the general public. And then uh, hey, we've hey, also hey, got the issue the of cellos? like playing uh, against the rail spam is just mm. awful. I, <laughs> I, I don't know I, why I anybody would want that. I, I can't really argue against this because, like, my my perspective is that it's just gonna be a couple of weeks of real hell and then people are going to realize it's bad and nobody likes losing so they're going to stop doing it Dude, that's my perspective on it rail battleships damn rail is bad less sorry can't like believe this rail's bad. year yeah but For it's what? very rare like that's very rare and, and now the real, the real battleship is by like summer 2023, well after it was known that the rail BP is just dog ass and it was designed that way on purpose, you had quite a few people mating that shit. And half the minis you'd see would bring it too. It's like, I don't think that's cool. Well, well, that's like their first game, or like I didn't really see people mating this. And now it's like pretty explicit the rail BP shit. Like it, it, it tells you on the con, like when you select the ship. So, like, that's very good because it doesn't, uh, doesn't, I don't know how to say that word. Disincentivizes? Like, just... Yes, that one. You do realize that the very first game we played after the rails were reinstated, we had someone want to bring a rail battleship with, and I quote, I don't care if it's bad. Yeah, well, that's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, you're going to do bad. it one time, and then after that, it's going to be fine. Like, well, people are going to realize it's bad. And oh. the midis were gonna bring real BBs anyways. Yeah, so like, I, I, I think the mark the mark eighty one being usable is fine <laughs> because people are like not gonna read the stats anyways when they make a real BB, are they? They're gonna make it anyways. I'm I'm very much pro these changes, and I think they're I don't know how to describe it, but it felt nicer to play the games with the rails as in the pacing when there was a long range threat to worry about that made it so you had to keep your head down and you had to play slower and more methodical. The burst fire makes for much, much better world gun gameplay. That is I... absolutely true. Like I have way more fun and I, I love playing RLDDs. I have way more fun oh. playing the burst ones, especially in the Scout Warfare. So it's just a more enjoyable experience too. I, I think it's fine to keep them the way they are on task because they're like they are balanced. Uh, the people that were gonna bring them to meme, we're gonna bring them anyways, and now we actually have a good reason to bring them, which is on the double axe score with scouts on five v five, which is pretty much the replacement for the four DD scout. And the DDs still have a place in the five DD array and the axe or plus DD fleet. So like, I think there's a good balance there in uh fun to balance i don't know um maybe i'm wrong but i think it's so the it's issue, good the way it is the main issue i have is that position and tactics is steadily mattering less and less and less and less and railguns are a part of that so the first step in causing the first major step in reducing the importance of where your ships are is uh the kind of the, the meta development of the battleship and the monitor being the two ships that are important and just having more stuff shooting is what's important it doesn't really matter where that stuff is not really because most of what's on the field can't actually damage it especially in the battleships case so as long as it's in there where it can hit other stuff that's fine it's it's a very 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 low demanding as far as position and tactics goes and rails makes that worse by having this sort of extreme range and yeah it kind of kind of doesn't really matter where you put these you're going to be able to shoot anything you just 
vaguely fly away from anything that gets within eight kilometers and you're good you don't you don't need to put them somewhere clever you don't need like with the rail destroyers where you have to put them in some pretty strong sight lines because it takes forever for them to get turned around to face anything else and they can't use their main drive to get to a new position because they have to have their nose on their target they have to use their thrusters to get to a new position for the most part uh and that's but you see, I think the mobility of the rail destroyer and the CHs is about the same. Like, no. if you have whiplashes on the DDs, you're gonna move fast, and um, at the ranges at which the DDs are, like your turret, like your traverse of the spinal, it's not gonna be that great. I think the like your engagement time is gonna be faster on the CHs, but you can move faster in the DDs, like reposition to a side line. I I don't think on any of my builds I was able to afford whiplashes on the CHs without sacrificing other stuff that's more important, like GPCs. I think the repositioning point is about the same, if not better on the DDs. They should be able to go faster in flank. Um, uh, yeah, if they can move the, use their main engines, which they're not always going to be able to do because they're going to need to be pointing their noses at their targets and firing, and a lot of times they're going to have to go with their oh, thrusters. The, the, you don't have to worry about that with the experts. The top speed is going to be the same, and the main engine is only point one way. So, and the I think the top speed is higher on the destroyers on flank with whip. Are these teams around start? Uh, oh, we finally have a four v four. Nice. Oh jeez, I'll get out of fleet editor here in like two seconds. Let's take a look here. Okay. Thank you for the feedback. I wanted to know about I, this game. I guess that's and I could participate. Like for yeah, these are pretty decent. Go down the... to the team chats, and we can get ready and go. Uh, 